you know, we always have those family members that we have to deal with once a year that you never know what's going to happen. They're complete wild cards. Sure. Um, we all have those ambitions and, you know, at work, like the Christmas, you know, the Christmas bonus thing. I mean, everybody can relate to that. I mean, it's, it's so relatable. And then to get stiffed by your boss, <laughs> get the, you know, the jelly of the month club thing. I mean, it's, it's, and I think that's why so many people root for Clark. Well, uh, yes. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing because you never know how a film is going to turn out. And, and um, I remember uh, the first terrifying preview that we had. It was in Pasadena. I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was absolutely you know, convinced that this uh, first preview would, would effectively ruin my career. I'd never direct again. And back to commercials, I would go <laughs> if I was lucky. And um you know, I was sitting next to the head of the studio, Terry Semmel, at, at the time for Warner's, and we were looking at the film, and and uh, it started off okay. And I was, re you know, but, you know, with broad comedies, uh, you know, one tended after a broad comedy ended, you're very entertained, but the first question you would ask are like, so uh, Indian or Chinese, what do you feel like? <laughs> <laughs> So you never know how it's going to resonate. But um, halfway through the film, or a little bit more, when Clark tries to um, put the lights on, hmm. slamming those wires together. <laughs> and we were, we were sitting in the audience, and when he did that, the entire audience let out a collective groan. Oh, oh no. And at that point, I turned to Terry, and he turned to me, and... He nodded at me and I understood the audience is with him. They believe yeah. what he's trying to achieve. And at that point, I kind of felt that the movie was going to be successful. Yeah. I mean, not because of the jokes. Yeah. But for that moment. The, hum the human side to it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I've seen this movie hundreds of times and I'm kind of like, you know, seeing Chevy Chase fall off a ladder. It's kind of like nothing is it, I got used to it, you know, You're like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's who Clark is. He falls off things. But my friend's uh, my friend's wife, she's French and she she never grew up with the movie. So it was so cool. We we're having this Christmas party years ago before Cooties. And um, <laughs> and uh, she was watching the movie. The sound wasn't even on, but it was all the scenes of Clark trying to set up the house. And she had this beautiful, pure reaction to it. You know, when you're not used to seeing things your entire life and you're almost seeing like the road runner for the first time sure. <laughs> messing with the coyote. It, um, and it really brought me back and really made me reappreciate the physical comedy that Chevy would do. Jason and I were talking about before, uh, did Chevy have a lot to say in the physical comedy he was going to do because he kind of made his bones about falling over since the Saturday Night Live days. No, I mean like, you know, a, a lot of the kind of physical comedy comes from the setups, not from the engagement of the action post setup. Mm -hmm. That's the release. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you're waiting for the release, like horror, right? Yeah. The, the engagement with horror is like what's behind the the corner, not the not the monster behind the corner, but the anticipation of it. Um, and like just by way of an example, when he's in the attic, um, oh, I had yeah. suggested that uh, to John that. Because we're making a comedy, I <laughs> wanted to stick in the most familiar comedic trope that I could remember of way back from silent films on of a man stepping on a board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, I don't know why that's funny. It always is funny. You can go back and look at, you know, Chaplin and, and Lloyd and all of those guys and when they step on a board, bam! Yeah, it's, fun. it's the best. <laughs> and so, but when and so he wrote it into the script, great. But when it came time to do it, I had my prop. I said I didn't just want to do it once. I wanted <laughs> him to step on the board, and then step on it again, and then step on it again, because the best comedy comes in threes. Yeah, and of course, Chevy is like, yeah, let's do that. He was naturally attracted to physical comedy, and it. Mm. But these things are very carefully planned in advance. You know, it's not like you're just kind of riffing on them. You know, I storyboarded this entire film. Wow. Um, and I still have the storyboards, um, which, you know, I'd probably give to the Academy 
when I when when I can go when it's free to go out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 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 uh, uh, the physical comedy again was something that we all work on together from the script to the rehearsal to what makes the funniest moment really. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Chevy and I got along very, very well um, on the film. Yeah, I think he wanted me to direct it, so that helps. If you enjoyed this clip, please click right here for the full interview and below to like and subscribe to the Rockland Power Hour.